Public Wisdom, we decided to dedicate a series of podcasts for those who work in the service and hospitality industries. We're talking about bartenders, servers, and the staff that work in these types of places. I think they're uh, a group of people that are often taken for granted and need to show, we need to show more respect to them. And I'd like to have some of them on to uh, just tell us some of their stories, some things they have to deal with, and the complexities of their job and how hard it is they have to work. And uh, first up in the series of these podcasts is a, a lovely young lady named Raina, and she does work at one of the establishments that my friends and I uh, do frequent. And she enlightens us on some of the stuff that uh, she's got to go through on, on a day to day basis in this type of world. So, without further ado, here we go. Uh, we'll roll right into it and we'll see what Raina has to say. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to go upstairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cobble the dog wants a cameo. <laughs> so, we're, we're recording, so let's just say. <clears throat> Raina, welcome to Pub Wisdom. Thank you. And today is our salute to the service staff and the, the ladies that serve us at the pub. Yes, right? we do our best. Today, Thank I you will for... get your beers as much as you want, as many yeah, times as you want. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank because you. Because I've always been very appreciative of how hard all you ladies work. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things I did was going to Johnny Blocks was kind of my therapy post-divorce mm -hmm. <laughs> and it just took me time and one thing that impressed me most is the fact that I was there like two three times and I, I come up and beer just slides up don't even have to pass mm -hmm. but okay I'm one of hundreds of people that person probably remembers right. yeah and I don't know and it's weird like when you're a server like you see so many different people but some faces they just stick and especially if they've come you know once two or three times but even like you said just the second or third time you know, it's it's weird the things that you remember because for me my memory is awful. But if someone mm -hmm. that I've served two or three times gets the same thing, I'll remember it right when I see them. So it's 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 a weird thing. <laughs> there, there must be some sort of association. So I I've, I'm kind of a neuroscience nerd too. Okay. And that's that's one of the things that triggered me. It's like, I'm good with faces, but I never remember names. Mm -hmm. like, same. Why can't I? Yeah. I but when people do, too. and they meet you, you meet the person for like the second time, and you get told to forget their name. Yeah. Like, like, hey, Raina, how you doing? And you're like, oh, wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> Who's this guy? Yeah. yeah, and then you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. They remember my name, too. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's, but there, there's there's a, a certain thing that, that kind of, people like that. Yeah. You know? and so I thought, okay, what I'm going to do is when I go to Johnny Black's, I'm going to start remembering people's names. Mm -hmm. Remember the staff. Remember the other regulars. And that was definitely a bar where there's regulars, right? Mm -hmm. there's, it's, it's wrapped in a the neighborhood. There's always the same people there. They all oh, live yeah. in the neighborhood. So, mm -hmm. It was very cool to kind of go there and actually learn so many people's names. I can walk right through that bar and, hey, John, hey, hey Dan, and, you know, and, yeah. just, and you know, hey, Mindy's a bartender tonight, and it's just like... Right, just, you just fit right in. Yeah, feel and, it's like, and then people are like, yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. And yeah. I feel like I got a pretty good rep doing You that. do, you do, because there's <laughs> definitely some regulars where we're like, oh, like, we're, we're sick of him, but you're definitely not one of them, you know. So... <laughs> that, Don't ruin that. <laughs> no, no, hang on to that, because that's a juicy little tab I want to get to. Ooh, okay. You don't have to name names, but yeah. I don't want you to name Obviously, yeah. uh, but I do want to get to some of those juicy stories with bad customers, mm -hmm. but also good customers too. Yeah, and the fact that you remember them, you remember what they drink and what they eat. Right, right. And and then, of course, I'm, today is all about uh, celebrating you guys mm -hmm. and then, and the hard work you do. Well, it's a it, it is, Yeah, and it's, it is hard work. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It really is. I mean, if you think about it, you're literally a servant. You're serving somebody. You know, you gotta put on your best smile, act like everything's fine, and even if you could be going through something horrible, but mm -hmm. you have to portray something completely different yeah. just to make sure that that person has a good quality, you know, meal mm -hmm. and experience, so that you can get, you know, a good tip and be able to pay your bills, hopefully. So, mm -hmm. but even then, when you do your best, you can end up not getting a good tip. So it's hand in hand. That's terrible. That's what tip your servers, Dan. Tip your damn tip servers. <laughs> and tip them good, That's okay? Right. At go. least 15%, tip. but 20 is good. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I like. Yeah, I mean, I always do my best to tip minimum 20%. And 
if I can just throw extra out, I do. Right. I, I don't have a lot of money to throw around. Exactly. But, but I like, budget that in when I go out. Exactly, and that's what people should do. Like, if you're going to go out and order all this food, you should factor in that tip, too, mm -hmm. because that person's going to work extra hard the more you get, you know? Right. So. And even if the food is bad and your server's good, take that into consideration. Right. It's not the server's <laughs> fault. We're trying our best, really. <laughs> we really there, are. There's a team of people that works by it. Now, exactly. But, it yeah. is. It's a huge team. And if one thing falls apart, then we all fall apart. And right. it's hard. But I think at Johnny's, we're pretty good. Yeah, we yeah. Have teamwork going on. It's one of, one of the places I really like. And yeah. Why? One of the reasons I frequent it so much. Yeah. <laughs> Other than being walking distance. Exactly. Miles, it's so convenient. Too yeah. convenient. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it built a high, high tolerance there. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. It's all right. Well, you also built a lot of good friendships, I'm sure. I have. Yeah. Uh, everyone I've had on so far has been regulars from the pub, you know, servers, and uh, <clears throat> Myron who came on. He's he started. I met him once at CJ Mahoney's, and mm -hmm. we were sitting down, sitting down next to each other for quite some time. It's one of the kind of, kind of slow nights, and I just, I just pointed at something on the TV. It was hockey, and he's like, "Oh man," and he goes, "I don't know much about hockey, but I can tell that's a lot of talent." And we just started talking. Mm -hmm. This guy's an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. He's he's starting up businesses in in um, Auburn Hills area. Okay. He started as a ser uh, not a server, but a uh, a kitchen guy. Okay. And kind of worked his way up to the point where he's doing his own thing. His own thing. Wow, that's Holy crap. Cool. That's and I awesome. just kind of just mentioned, hey, I'm starting up this podcast. Would you mind being a guest? Like, sure. But, all right, give me a yes. Okay, <laughs> good. Let's go. go. Yeah. Yeah, so. Isn't it interesting how, like, the universe just brings you to people without you even knowing it? Like, you know, that one conversation mm -hmm. that you struck up. Yeah. You know, what if you didn't sit next to him? Right. Well, if I didn't say anything. Exactly. Right? So many what ifs. Yeah. And exactly. so many do. I understand. Wait, you're going out, you're sitting at a bar, there's people sitting on the other side of you. Mm -hmm. Why are you not conversing? Right. The pub was originally a place that people went to to go talk. Public mm -hmm. house, right? It's okay. where they had these conversations. And it was actually about religion and politics and stuff like that. Oh, Depending on what that. country, it may be not religion, but yeah. it was about politics for sure. And mm -hmm. things we're not supposed to talk about today. Right? Yeah. Uh, and I also do understand the people who do just want to go up and do their own thing and, you know, be on their own. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, for one, I do enjoy going out to eat by myself. And um, I like to kind of just sit back and observe and just kind of... But I do also like to socialize, too. So it's almost like if you don't want to socialize, maybe get the table away from, you know, people. If you do want to socialize, then, yeah, go sit up at the bar. I will say I have done that a few times. Mm -hmm. And I... There have been a couple of times I just sat like way in the back of the corner. Right. Yeah. Just, just give me a hockey on TV so mm -hmm. I can just watch that and yeah. And uh, <laughs> some sort of you're all right. But right. I'm not fine. I just want to zone it out. Yeah, I just want to have that kind of night. That, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah I, I can't see sitting at a bar and yeah. Because that's, to me, it's where you mingle, right? Mm -hmm. like, I've been quite an observer of life, and I just as much as I've sat there, I, I'm watching back and forth. I'm watching everything. I'm watching the action, which I. It's always very fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah. Sitting next to the server station, watching. The, oh yeah, I'm watch sure. the bartender hustle make drinks, watching you ladies come up running and holy cow, it's it's it. There's a, a bit of almost like a ballet where it's got to mm -hmm. these are work out like you said. When one part breaks, it all starts falling apart. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's weird. I feel like we're all kind of like on autopilot where we don't even like hmm. realize that we are like just really just doing our own thing and stuff and. And sometimes I catch myself, I'm like, wow, like, I feel like sometimes, have you ever heard of Diner Dash, the game? It was like an old computer game. But it was basically where you're a waitress and, like, you're, and you have a bird's eye view and you have to go, you know, take their order and then place the ticket and all this stuff. And Somebody basically gamified. <laughs> right. Serving, yeah. Serving, so yeah, sometimes yeah. I feel like I'm playing the game in real life and I, you know, have to do these objectives and, you know, do, 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 but... It kind of makes it more fun when you when you think about it as a game instead of just a job, because then I don't know. It's just the way that I think. Slightly distracted, I started the slideshow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's a there's, there's a story behind this picture. Um, I just discovered White Claw, and I didn't I had no idea what it was, but I understood it was a chick drink. <laughs> and um, so <laughs> um, I made I had a couple photos, and I actually have them on Facebook, but I don't think I have you on Facebook, mm -hmm. but. I made the old school uh, box with a stick mm -hmm. and I put white claws in it and I had the string <laughs> and I, I put it at the curb. Oh no. <laughs> I sit on the porch, I got a picture. They didn't want the old house, they went here and I, I put it on a, 
And what I did here is a, is a free white claws, pumpkin spice lattes, and um, something else. And it was, I call it my white girl trap. <laughs> <laughs> so when I saw a, a package of uh, a white claws there, I was like, oh yeah, man, uh, I got I got bait. <laughs> right, there you go, reel them in with that. That's so funny. I'll just let that roll for a bit, because, uh, but yeah, there's, yeah, you can see my grin. <laughs> <laughs> that was a couple years back. My daughter is in their, their YouTube channel. Aww. So when I had them on here, they were, ah, the legends of Johnny Blacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. I haven't seen them in so long. Ice tea John? With the beard, right? Him and the, yeah. Yeah. Ice tea John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you said icy. I was like, oh, huh? <laughs> Ice tea John. Yeah, there he is drinking his iced tea right there. What, yeah. what happened to him? I haven't I seen him literally in forever. Of Johnny Blacks. Really? Yeah. He, um, sad thing. I don't know. I shouldn't have named names. Crap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I probably should have talked about that one offline. Okay. I, it's, I shouldn't. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I said too much already. But anyway, um, tell me about some of the good things that you've you experienced, good customers and, and good people you work with. Is any any good stories come to mind um, that maybe people outside the service industry mm -hmm. wouldn't know, or, or mm -hmm. is there any, any aspects of that in industry that, that people don't really know about that maybe would help them tip better? Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, um, well, first of all, the the big thing is that nobody ever really tips on carry out, and 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 people think, oh, well, the server, the person doesn't have to do anything. You know, they're just boxing it up and putting it away. The cooks and do. but yeah, and then the cooks do, but um, the tips go to the food runner, and yes, they do box these things away, but. You have to realize if it's a busy night and you're placing a to-go order, they're taking time out of their busyness in the restaurant to box your food, get it ready, and then, you know, put it in the counter way, you know, to get picked up, and then cash it out and stuff. It takes time, and, yeah. you know, so I, I think that that's an important thing to... It's taking your attention away from regulars like me. <laughs> so tip them well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They worth their time. <clears throat> yes, exactly. You know, if you don't get paid well, and that's another thing too. Well, people will make that argument. Well, if you don't like the hourly pay, then why are you doing it? You know, and it's like get a different job or this and that. And it's like, well, no, it's good money. The tips are good money. Yeah, it seems like it seems like you're able to pull down decent cash, but it's it's very what it fluctuates. Yes, it big time. High, and it customers. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of variables there. Mm -hmm. And then Most the other thing is cash in hand, and I'm assuming it's every night. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, and it helps it's a, tremendously. It's a benefit, right? It really is. It really is. Those of us stuck on salary get paid twice a month. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's a starvation hard. point there. <laughs> well, and, and that's why I only work part-time there is because, you know, I have my other jobs that are my main focus, but with them being, you know, I take care of kids on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And so when, you know, they're in school all day, so I don't really get that many hours with them. Mm -hmm. So me working at the restaurant makes up for it. And I'm able to pay my rent just working, you know, at the restaurant two right. days a week. So it really helps. So, but, <clears throat> you know, there's good and bad and everything. And that's, you know, the same serving. And yeah, there's really crappy customers, but I've met a lot of really amazing people. I mean, you know, you included, you were one of them. <laughs> um, and you know, you just learn so much and you get different viewpoints of things and you know, just That's not me. That's things. the dog bugging you, by the way. <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not reaching in the chair. Yeah, I know, right, no, it's the, the cute, cute dog. Oh, um, I found the chair, all right. Right, but, um, and it's, and I really do love having regulars because you just create a different bond with them, you know, as, as opposed to somebody who only comes in, you know, once in a great while, that's mm -hmm. nice, but somebody who comes in regularly, you develop a certain type of relationship yeah. and, you know, you end up caring for one another and develop, you know, something that's really great. And I've met a lot of really great people through that and, um, have shared a lot of moments and I've cried with some customers and Aww. in good ways, you know, and just talking yeah. about deep stuff and, you know, it's, it's a really beautiful thing. And that's another good point right there. Uh, all the different hats that servers and staff and bartenders have to wear, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a psychology. There. I mean, oh my God. Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> some, some, some drunk guys are like dealing with children. <laughs> I mean, a woman too, woman too. It's, yeah. It goes, the, you know, with everything. 
Um, but you definitely become a therapist sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes that can be hard because you have four other tables that need your help. <laughs> but then this one drunk person is rambling on and on and on. And, yeah, and you want to be there for them. Never done that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I am such a compassionate person and an empathetic person. So I really care for people and I really want to be there. But it's like, you know, I, I got to do my job too. So it, it's hard. But um, definitely, yes, there are different hats that we have to wear. And, and some of them are not fun ones, like when we have to cut people off if they're drinking too much. And me, I'm a people pleaser. It's one of my faulties. But, I, you know, I just don't like upsetting people. So when sure. I have to do that and, you know, they get upset or angry, I know I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing my job. But, I, you know, I feel bad. I'm like, you know, I don't want to, you know, ruin your night or anything. But <laughs> I think you should be done, you know. But um, there's such a fine line with that, and we have to take certain, you know, measurements and protocols. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people don't know moderation, and that's, no. that's a thing that no, we don't. just don't understand. It. I think it's almost synonymous with American culture. If one is good, and ten must be extreme. Right. Uh, right. Uh, so, yeah, I don't... <laughs> I, everyone I, thinks they have to get so fucked up when they drink. Like, you don't need a blackout to have a good time, you know? I mean, I can ask you the question, but I, I also could ask someone who's seen me there quite, quite a bit more. Is mm -hmm. How many times have you seen me, like, staggering out of there? I mean, Never, I mean, really. I get out of control, so I do, yeah. I do have a very metered, metered way of doing things. And then people are like, hey, you want a shot? And most of the time, I'm like, mm. Yeah, yeah, you have and your beer. You don't want to bring out the beast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The beer is slow and controlled, and that's mm -hmm. about like it. You start throwing shots, and then you start going over the hill real fast. Right, and you're just like, bam, bam, bam. And yeah. then next thing you know, you're on the floor, and you're like, how did I get here? And where I am I? Off that floor. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh. And wipe some nasty mouths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only for my sister. That's, that's a true yeah. sister bond right there. Yeah. I was going to say, that's, yeah. Again. Not any of strangers. I'm not that nice. <laughs> not that nice. Again, dealing with children. But yes. <laughs> well, thankfully, none of them have thrown up around me, so oh, thank okay. God. But the other end, yes, I do have to deal with uh, frequently, yeah. <laughs> not to, you know, <laughs> we don't have to get into that. <laughs> all right. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, um, no it's all circles. those are all really good good stories, good points. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that, I just hope maybe... Anybody who watches this can gleam a little bit off that, so yeah, maybe yeah. we need to treat our servers a little better because yeah, we're human too. Yeah. We're not just servants, and yeah. we, I I don't know if it's just me, but I like connecting with people and I love talking with people, and um, you know I have these four guys that have become kind of regulars, and they started they travel throughout Michigan. They work, you know, I don't really want to say too much of their their stuff or whatever, but they work with the police department and. <clears throat> I would say they're all like 50 plus and no creepy vibes or anything. They're all very nice men and um, they give I'm me kind of like, yet, me, <laughs> and they give me like that father figure type of no. love, like that feeling, yeah. you know what I mean? And um, I just lost my father back in September mm -hmm. or November 17th, 2021. So it was just, just a year, a year ago. ago. Yeah. Oh, sorry, so sorry. yeah, it's shitty. It was really messed up. Johnny's was so amazing and so supportive with that and right. continue to be. So I'm very blessed for that. But it's very interesting when these men came into my life because like I said, they gave me that, you know, that feeling and, um, they, they were like, usually when we travel, we go to different restaurants, but they're like, we love this place and we love you. Like you're Aww. so amazing. And mm -hmm. so we ended up creating this amazing bond, all, all of us. And, um, one night, you know, twice we've cried together, me and specifically this one guy. And just talking about my dad and the things that I've been through and mm. they all just teared up and told me that they were proud of me and like it was just such a beautiful moment and you know they always take care of me and they're always checking in on me and and I even got you know the one that I'm really close to I got his number and you know we text back and forth and I'm just checking in on each other but see as a dad <clears throat> myself of daughters mm -hmm. I can appreciate that and, yeah you know I'm, I'm not that age but I, mm -hmm. I get it right and, I, I see younger younger ladies, and I, I hear stories about that, like I lost her dad. That's something that's very, um, it's, it's very cute in my mind. Mm -hmm. I have an older brother passed away a couple years back, and it's like, holy cow, it's I'm almost tough. his age when he passed away. And it's weird. Whew, it's like you keep behind, growing. And yeah, they... and he left behind a daughter, my niece. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. So I, 
Yeah, and then I also think about that, what about me? What if I pass my weapons, mm -hmm. my daughters, you know? Yeah. It's just to know that there's other guys out there that, that kind of, they, they get it. And mm -hmm. I think my generation still has a little bit of that left. Yeah. Where, where it's like, okay, take people take, your way. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and I, don't, I, I wouldn't suspect anything creepy out of that either, so. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. That's really good to hear. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Wow. And good I had, story. Good story. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you know, uh, you know, uh, well, we don't want to say names, but um, she's also a frequent and regular there. And, you know, she's kind of skinny and really loud laugh. And yeah, I'm going to type it out. How about that? Because <laughs> I know you know Talk her. amongst yourselves. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> look away. Look away. Uh, I'm, pretty, eyes. I'm pretty sure that's her name. Hmm. Uh, don't know if I know her. I don't know. Well, know she know. also lost her dad a couple of years ago, hmm. and um, I'm not a bartender, you know, I'm a server, and so she's always sitting at the bar, so I don't really know a lot of the regulars that are at the bar. Like, I was, on, on my drive here, I was wondering, like, how do we even, like, start talking and, like, getting to, you know... Converse because I don't know, I always sit at the bar. Yeah, you always and you're always kind of next here. to the server station yeah, I, too. I like I like the traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I also love watching that area yeah. because it just the action that happens mm -hmm. in it. But also that's kind of a good area where I'm with the guys, people come in and out of the door and yeah. stuff. And I honestly I do have I have real true dad protective instincts. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always had a protective instinct, but Something goes down, I, my eyes are up. Yeah, know? I feel like especially being a, a girl dad, like mm -hmm. it's just different. Yeah. Something changes in you. I want something to happen to ladies. I mean, and mm -hmm. I've always been protective of women in general. I mean, that's maybe that's just a nature of mine, but yeah. which I think it should be all men. Yeah, right. It should be nature, a male right? instinct. But yeah, I mean, so yeah, so as people get to know people and you get, and you, yeah, getting back to how you and I kind of connected, I think that was probably just back at the table. I don't know if you probably knew Johnny Pat before before you met me. But mm -hmm. I think I I think I knew Pat before. Yeah. Probably. So some people call him Pat. Some people call him Johnny. Some people okay. call Johnny. I, Johnny I, Pat. Yeah. Johnny Pat, yeah. <laughs> Threw it all together. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Make it just one. Yeah. Yeah. But um. But yeah. Anyways, that that woman I was talking about, you know, she I never you know talked to her anything because she always sat at the bar, but I always knew of her. And um, we were in the bathroom, and she was talking, or I don't even know how it got, but, oh, she was talking about her dad, and something inside it, it was kind of recent to when I lost my dad, and I just asked her, like, how did you get through it? Because it's, it was just so difficult for me, and, and she really helped me so much through that, and that really, you know, created a bond there. Uh -oh. And, you know, every time we see each other, you know, how you doing, how's it going, you know, doing anything for your dad lately, you get any signs, you know, so uh -oh. it's... It's really a beautiful thing, and yeah. and those people make me enjoy going to work and you know seeing them and stuff like that. So yeah, it yeah, gives you nice. gives you a fun reason to go back. Right. Yeah. Just just and my interactions with the staff, especially if I'm sitting at the bar, it's usually like hi, how you doing? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. But you know what? I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you actually said hi was to me like oh good they. Took two seconds out of the day. Right, out of our craziness. Yeah. But because I, it gets I understand crazier because sometimes. You, you ladies are always moving and mm -hmm. it's like you got work to do. You're yeah. on the job. It's yeah. really a workout. It really yeah. is. And I and I feel like and especially when it's hot out and you know, people sit outside and they're oh, around yeah. the corner and it's yeah, like such a pain <laughs> in the ass. Like, oh you gotta stay on the alley, oh fuck. Like, come on. But it really you is a workout. The dark place out there, bright sun. <laughs> exactly. Back here. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's tough. But definitely, like when I don't work there for a while, and then I go back and I work, I definitely feel it. I'm kind of a lazy person. I don't really work <laughs> out or anything, so that could have a huge factor in that. But I mean, it really is. I mean, you're on your feet for seven, eight hours. You don't get a break, and mm. you know, doing this and that, running around, taking care of everybody. And the same with this. I don't have. The, the the brighter one washes this out. But, oh, okay. But uh, yeah, oh, if if a subject comes up and I've got something that oh, I'll, I can bring it up and put it on screen. Mm, okay. I have a uh, not modeled after Joe Rogan, but I love the way Joe Rogan does his podcast. But mm -hmm. I don't have a Jamie out there to say, hey man, pull that up. <laughs> yeah. Eventually they'll get there. I mean. Yeah, right. One day you'll have yeah, your sidekick. Sure. Cabo. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. There's a position open for you, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> So cute, and I miss having a dog. He's at retirement age. That's okay. <laughs> he still tries. Do you think you'll have another dog? 
definitely. I might, I might take time. Yes. For it's sure. going to be a while because he's the first and only dog I've ever owned. Oh, for, really? From, for me only. Like, so there was always in the family dogs growing up. And then <clears> yeah. when I moved out on my own, I uh, met my ex wife. And then we got her dog from Michigan when we were in North Carolina. Okay. Brought that down and lived with that dog for seven, eight years. Um, she passed away very suddenly. I mean, she was 13 years old and amazing shape. Just yeah. Died running. Fell wow. over and died. <gasps> Wow, well, did they say like what caused it? Heart attack. Wow. Yeah. Mm. But she was Poor crazy too. Yeah. She was like this guy. Like, Bing, like, I got yeah, right. Maybe you just bring it out with him. <laughs> so it scares me every time he does like something crazy. Like, oh, oh, I bet. So yeah, and uh, but yeah, so yeah, I don't know what don't know what else to do. There's um, having a dog is great, but being able to leave your house and travel anytime. Yeah. It's kind of nice. So when I have my daughters, it's. It's very tight, dad time with the kids. Yeah. But then when I don't have my daughters, which is the other fifty percent of the time, I am free to be an adult. So go out and do things, have fun, mm -hmm. talk to other adults. It's yeah. What I like to do. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but traveling is is tough with a dog. Mm -hmm. He's great. He's great in the car. That's but good. You can't go out her way. Yeah. Him, which kind of sucks. Right. And like if you want to go out for the night and you know have fun, yeah. it's gonna be stuck by yourself. Keep your ears stay out all night. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's where it's kind of nice to get a cat because they're so easy and they, they're okay. I know, I'm more of a dog girl. I grew up with dogs. I've had, you know, so many dogs in my life. I had four at one time. And, um, but I actually am getting a cat. I was always very not like, cats kind of scare me sometimes. They're very unpredictable very. and their claws hurt and mm -hmm. it's just too much. But, um, I've been needing a pet. I've been needing a pet and mm -hmm. I'm not financially or mentally stable to have a dog right now because it's just dogs are just like I feel like a bigger commitment they than cats. They feed off your anxiety. Oh if, yeah. If you're an anxious person they're going to be crazy. Exactly yeah and I want my dog to like have a good home like a good spacious home mm -hmm. and a good dog mom. Mm -hmm. So um, my sister's fr I call him my basically brother because he's been in our life since I was a kid. Yeah. Um, he's had this cat since it was a kitten and so now he's gotten two other cats, a big dog, and has a toddler. So this cat has became super anxious and just mm -hmm. isolates himself. And oh. he's very sweet though, and he doesn't usually come out. But when my sister is over there, he comes out and he sees her. So my sister and I are moving into it with, together, um, actually within the next few weeks. And we were over there in his house, and you know we're like, oh, look, you know we want a cat. He's so cute. Well, why? He's like, take him. I like, really. Yeah, he's like, I've been trying to find a home, but, you know, he, it's a very specific home. He can't have any, you know, other pets, no mm -hmm. kids, you know, nothing, none of that. And he's a very calm environment. And he's like, I also don't want to just give him away to anybody. And he's like, I want to give it to someone I trust. I'm like, totally understand. And he's like, so you guys are kind of like perfect. And I'm like, good, thoughtful people being yeah. considered to other good, thoughtful people. Right. That's nice. Right. Well, so it worked out beautifully. So I'm really excited for that. I really hope he ends up being cuddly because I miss having a cuddle buddy, Aww. you know, because with dogs, God, they're just cuddlers. They are. Yeah, he, he, he certainly is. Yeah. He likes the women. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. But, but yeah, all my dogs, I, you know, all, I love them all, and they were cuddlers. And, and just that comfort, you know, yeah. and just be, they, them wanting to be around you is just mm -hmm. a good feeling. And yeah, they bond very well with you. My, my experience with, with dogs, 99%, probably 99.9% .9 of all dogs I've ever met love me. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of great with me. Mm -hmm. That other percentage that didn't go on, oh, well, they're just assholes. <laughs> yeah, right, right. They have problems, not I'm me. not the problem. Right, right exactly. <laughs> but uh, cats. They're hard. I think I've known like two or three cats my entire life that I actually liked and got along with. Uh -huh. All the other ones, if you go to someone's house, like your cat springs up, oh, you got a cat, mm -hmm. oh, how cute, and you're sitting down, and the cat comes up and they're rubbing your leg, like, oh, you know, petting the cat, oh, how pretty, you know. Yeah. And like, <laughs> you pet the cat again. Yeah, right. What it's the hell? Terrifying. Oh, well, Fluffy likes being pet three times, not four. <laughs> That's so true. How am I supposed to know yeah, that? These cats all come with different instructions. I guess so, yeah. right. That's so funny. Yeah, cats have always really scared me, but that's why I'm kind of excited for this cat because he is so, you know, it's sad, but he's so anxious and so shy. And 
you know, I, I never wanted a cat because I don't want my shit thrown away and clawed at and, you yeah. know, and the random attacks when I'm trying to love it, you know, yeah. it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm scared from the unpredictability too because my dog bit me when I was a kid. Because I was, you know, getting in his face and everything, and he bit me, and that, he really bit my lip, like, really good, yeah, mm -hmm. it, ooh, it hurt, but he was an asshole, too, <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> Again, that 1% of dogs. Right, he was that 1%, for sure, for sure, but. I have, I have similar experiences with cats, I remember, like, I think I was at a cousin's house in New Jersey, and we had a cat, and, like, reaching under, under whatever it was to pet the cat, I'm, uh -huh. I just, I was a little kid, I love um, animals, right? Yeah. Trying to pet this cat, his cat clawed the crap off. Right, and get away from me, yeah. God, man. It's like, uh, but yeah, right, his claws are sharp there. Yeah, right? but I am so against declawing cats, though. Like, it's just. I can agree with that. It's, it's horrible. Like, I understand you don't want your shit clawed up and stuff. Don't have a cat, then. Right. Get a dog. Right. You know, dogs, yes, they can also claw, but they're really not. Oh, no. This little guy, 13 straight years of perfect dog. Uh -huh. A few months prior to moving out of previous house and then this one, he decides, I'm going to start tearing shit up. No. My couch, my new couch, um, tore off three bedroom doors. Oh my goodness. <laughs> got into my room, chewed through the door, got into my room, <gasps> chewed, up, chewed up my best pillow. Like I've got a pillow that's actually curved to fit my neck, so oh, I can keep my neck yeah. on my side. That one pillow, I want pillows in my neck. <laughs> I would have been so pissed. It would come and go, come and go, so I was yeah. kind of worried about some weird things. I got a camera in the house to watch them. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if he I was just anxious event. about the move or something. I wanted, well, he, he had no idea that was coming either. Mm, it, was, yeah. it was even before I was even looking for a house, but it was very random too. Oh, okay. Like, hmm. So I didn't know what was going on, but um, went to the vet, checked him out, everything's good. And like, well, he might be getting old, might be getting dementia. Aww. And I've seen, there's been a few moments where he's, dogs could get dementia. he's just, yeah, they're just, just like people, honestly. There's yeah. a few, few moments where he's just pacing around the house, his eyes are kind of glazed over, and he's just panicking Aww. as if there's a thunderstorm or something. Oh, uh, yeah. It's the same kind of panic. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there was something triggering him into that yeah. when I was gone. It's so sad watching. You couch. Right. <laughs> it's so sad watching a dog get old and like yeah. just watching them. You know, you know their days coming, and it's just not trying to like make you upset about. You know, oh. he's fine. He's gonna live forever. But you know, I I had a dog that was in my life since I was probably like third or fourth grade, and she lasted until gosh, I think I was a senior. And that's a long, she was a Cocker Spaniel, that's a long time. Oh. And um, she was my buddy, she was my everything, and I loved her so much. And <laughs> and we we call them the Carino dogs, so we always rescued dogs when I was, you know, a kid growing up. And so we had, we had Bo, and then we, we had Poe, and then we had Buddy, and then we had the four that I told you about. So we had two Cocker Spaniels, Bernie's mom dog, and a chow. And like those were like who we called the Carino dogs. And Katie was the youngest one, the Cocker Spaniel I was just talking about. So she lasted the longest. And like, so she saw it all. She saw, you know, us moving from our first house to the next house. And then, you know, my parents splitting up and then being homeless and finding a home and like all these things. And then, so like when she passed, it was like, wow, she really was there through everything for us and was such a big comforter. And, and I think people don't realize how much dogs can do for somebody. Like, they really can be such a lifesaver. So, I've kind of been thinking about this for a while, quite a while. He's the oldest of all of my family, family's dogs. Mm -hmm. you know, even on their, my, my girl's mom's side, all of their dogs too. Mm -hmm. So, he's all of my girls in Brooklyn now, because he's mm -hmm. older than my daughters. Um, I remember, I had a dog that passed away when I was... I was 12, she was 13, she was a year older than so all I ever known. Yeah. Very hard in my life. Yeah. Very hard. Yeah. Because that dog had seen it all, a lot like, a lot like you were just saying, yeah. a, lot, a lot of life events. And um, so I've kind of been getting this going in my head. It's like, dogs teach us a lot. I mean, they teach us a lot. They teach us, as a puppy, they teach us about life. Yeah. And they teach us about, you know, training and all kinds of discipline. and. and and then understanding it, but they also feed back and teach us unconditional love. Mm -hmm. They just, oh, they just, no matter what you do, don't no people matter are what. Old dogs, oh. they still love them. You know, dog, so dogs up. still love them, and it's sad, but mm -hmm. dogs teach us that, right? Yeah. 
And no matter what, I mean, he snuggles with my little one all every night, mm -hmm. every night. So, unfortunately, they also teach us about death mm -hmm. because their lives are shorter than ours. But mm -hmm. they also give you an opportunity to learn from that death that there's life, if there's new life on the other side mm -hmm. when you get a new puppy, and then that starts all over again. So yeah, and it kind of helps you accept it and yeah. remember that that's just a part that's everybody's end point yeah. you know it's 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 crazy because it's the only thing out of everything that anybody can be 100 percent sure on is death because mm -hmm. it's you know anything else can change so Ta many things can happen too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but um yeah it's 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 crazy and yeah losing a dog it's especially when you're a kid and yeah it's you know, especially if you haven't really dealt with death, you know, mm -hmm. even with humans, right. you know, it's it's right. it's rough. So yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I told that guy I was like, yeah, you gotta last at least fifteen years, but mm -hmm. <laughs> he's fourteen now. He's he, he's hanging in there. Yeah, there's been moments where he's had these these senile kind of moments, but I mean, he seems like he's a. I mean, he's running around, you know, been exercising him and yeah. trying different homeopathic kind of that's path. Good. the vet gave me a whole list of homeopathic things first oh that's nice I, I, I agree with that approach before yeah. we hit any real drugs yes so that's I a good vet to have i went around the gambit with stuff like that and mm -hmm. i landed on stuff that seems to kind of help him mm -hmm. and then between that and the exercise mm -hmm. stimulation so he's always been a ball chaser mm -hmm. I, I could take him out throw a ball until he just passes out, out. yeah and then just forever he had that kind of drive uh -huh. As he's gotten older, the ball, eh, not so much, mm -hmm. or it just, it got less and less, but he was satisfied. Now it's like, not at all. Aww, I yeah. want to get the energy out of him. Yeah. So, go back to walking with him. He's never been good on the leash. He oh, no. Not. He's amazing <laughs> off the leash. I can go anywhere with him, and he'll stay. Yeah. yeah. I rec have you ever tried, like, a harness? I do, yeah, I have okay. a harness. I have a harness, I have Nana's coats, and my mom makes these dog coats and, mm -hmm. and dog dresses That's and stuff. so and cute. So he's got a coat that fits on it. It's like, you watch it, you put him on, and he goes, you just look like, like I don't want to. Right. And you put it on, and he, he yaks off on it, ew. Yeah. But after about a couple minutes, like, hey, I'm warm. I like yeah, this. like this isn't too bad. Nana's want to take it off. Yeah. You know? But uh, yeah, so <laughs> we've been going for walks, and that seems to help him, and he's been pretty good. So he's backed off from tearing things up, so it's back to normal. So, but I also think that there's something that dogs do, and I saw this in the last the last dog, um, as they get old, they start doing weird things, and it's almost like, as if they're preparing you that mm -hmm. time's coming, mm -hmm. and they do things that kind of like upset you about them, mm -hmm. and like him tearing up the house and the couch and stuff yeah. like that. And like, a lot of repairs to the house before I Yeah, or like shitting in the house or, you know, the things they usually was, don't do. Was, she, she never made a mess in the house, he's never made a mess in the house. Mm -hmm. and he still hasn't made a mess in the house, but she was becoming incontinent where she'd just stand up and stuff was just falling out of her. Mm -hmm. And you get mad, but it's like, then you start to realize mm -hmm. it's not she her fault. Can't, yeah, I can't help it. And you could just see it there. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just letting it flow out of but me. So I, I think that's those little signs that kind of prepare you. It's like, Maybe they're not going to be here forever. Start preparing. Yeah. And uh, I'm worried about my daughters because it's going to hit them hard. Yeah. And, you know, all you can do is just be there for them. Yeah. And, you know, let them feel what they need to feel. Yeah. And, you know, let them feel validated and that their feelings are okay. And, you know, that their dog will always be watching over. And, yeah. you know, they'll be still snuggling with her. Yeah. Whoever he snuggles with. Whichever of your daughters uh -huh. that he snuggles with. Yeah. I believe, I'm very big on like souls and reincarnation and all okay. of that jazz. My mom's a psychic and a medium, so uh, I, was, uh, I was raised very differently. Okay. And so with dogs, um, I'm still, I'm kind of in a gray area with dogs and their souls and like how, if, if and how they reincarnate and if, you know, do they reincarnate to people? Do they only stay dogs or cats or animals? You know what I mean? I never really dived into that yet in my life. But I definitely feel and know in my heart that when they pass over that they definitely are waiting for you to come and join them and that they stick around and they hang out. There's been so many stories actually of like people getting readings and you know the person who's reading them will be like do you ever feel like a, like a, like a pressure on the bed or like you know, some thumping or like some something on the bed with you and they'll be like, Yeah, why? And they'll be like, That's that's your dog that's mm. that's laying oh. with you and 
And sometimes they'll even cry and they're like, that's weird that you see that because I either thought of that or I smelled them or I heard like a panting, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I, I fully believe in that, that dogs come into our lives for so many purposes and that, you know, maybe in the soul life, your soul's made that contract where, hey, you're going to be going through some shit in your life. And me as a dog, maybe I'm going to have a horrible, you know, upbringing. We're going to come together and we're going to teach each other unconditional love and how to be, you know, there for each other and stuff like that. So that's just my beliefs, but yeah. That's a good segue. And I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> you, want another, you want another beer? We well, can pause for a moment. I'll get you another beer. Um, and... Yeah, I'll do one more because okay. I do got to get going soon. Sure. So. All right, we'll pause and we'll be right back. <laughs> I drink and take one. You know, on pub wisdom, I've learned I'm getting older. But what I've also learned is, if you don't want to feel old anymore, just hang out with guys older than you. You always feel young. And getting emotional through that, right? right. So, sarcasm, mm -hmm. weird things, so like, people don't get it. Right, you can't hear right. their tone of voice right. or their facial expression. Emojis kind of help. Right, but, but like, yeah, they don't really display the right. truth and you, what right. you're and trying to do. People can still misread that. Exactly. Right? So, phone calls better mm -hmm. because, once again, tone of voice, things like that. Yeah. And then beyond that, in person, right? Yeah. Body language, yeah. facial expressions. Mm -hmm. I can read a lot more on that. And yeah. We pick up on that and we don't even realize it. Right. Very true. And that's where FaceTime is nice too, or right. if you're not able to, you know, get together with somebody, you know, hey, let's have our talk then on FaceTime so that's that I point. can yeah. see how you're reacting and you can see how I I'm. I don't do enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't. I don't think you ha you don't have an iPhone, so. No, I don't. Yeah. Loser. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> But I know on Facebook chat you can video chat. Yeah, with people. there's Facebook Messenger as a as a as Messenger, a video one. Yeah. And I've used that as a gone back and forth between like with my daughters as they give them some form of communication between their mom and I and other family members. Yeah. They had iPads and they, they break the iPads. So I can, yeah. I get Google tablets and they break those. And yeah. like, what do I do? How so old are your daughters? Eleven and eight. Okay. So at least this has last over the years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's funny because I'm the youngest of I have two older sisters, so all girls. And so being the youngest, obviously I've never had a younger sibling, I never understood that bond. But um with one of the boys that I take care of, he has a younger sister. And um she's ten now, so I've watched her grow from seven to ten. And that alone, like I look back on videos and I'm like, wow. You know, it's crazy how fast kids grow. I mean, I, I, I have my first niece, too. She's about to be seven months. And mm -hmm. that, too. I'm like, holy shit. Like, babies grow like that. It's yeah, crazy. Do. It's insane. So, but but with his sister, it's just such a different bond and such a different love. And, like, we have become sisters. And, you know, she 
comes to me for different things and, you know, she's not used to having a normal sibling because her brother is, you know, on the spectrum and he doesn't, you know, he can't communicate and display emotions and affection and be like a normal brother, you know? So she doesn't understand what goes into a normal sibling relationship, if that makes sense. So with me being coming in and showing her, oh, like this is what sisters do, or you know, we can talk about things just you and I, and we don't have to tell mom, like it's okay, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. and watching her slowly open up and talk to me about things because her parents are from India, mm -hmm. so very different culture and yes. different, you know, lifestyles and beliefs and things that they don't really, you know, touch subject on. And, and I of course make sure, you know, to watch my boundaries and you know not to indulge in, into too much of things that she shouldn't be knowing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But also giving her that space, that, that safeness of, you know, if she needs to talk to me about something that she's afraid to talk to her parents about, you know, she has a safe person to come and talk to that, you know, yeah. won't tell her, you know, you can't think like that or you, you shouldn't be feeling that <clears throat> way for, you know what I mean? So. Kids do need alternatives from their parents, even if their parents are good, right. good and well intended. Right? It's, I mean, it's important, I feel. Yeah. I think so too. And it helps you grow. I mean, if otherwise you're you're just growing in a sheltered world. And yeah. It's not healthy. No, either. and it can really um, hold you back from having more open relationships and more open communication, I should say, and wanting to branch out and talk with other people. Because if you're so used to being in that tight little bubble, you know, you might not feel comfortable extending that out. You know. Totally agree. Or it could be the opposite where you feel suffocated, so you just rebel and. Yeah, know. that's the yeah, that is the flip side. Of it, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why pastors' daughters are usually the, the woo -woo girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Catholic school girls. Are gonna, yeah. <laughs> you know the stereotypes. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the but you know, it's based the more off something. person is, the tend more they tend to act out. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Know, it's part of human nature. I mean, too. gosh, when I was younger, my mom would constantly ground me, and I would still just keep, you know, I'm going to sneak out still, or I'm going to find another way to do what I was trying to do, you know? And, and I already bolted the windows for my daughters. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Tracking mechanisms. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> They're going to have the oh. lovely uh, anklets. <laughs> Made by you. Were you in jail? No, it's no, dead. it's my dad. Yeah, with all your handiwork that you do. Is it right. up now? All right. <laughs> like, how does your dad know where you're at? That's <laughs> John. Just just know. Know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it says here you broke the boundary twice, kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have uh, I have another good friend who. Raised his daughter on a very more, a much more open strategy, where him and, him and his his wife were very open and communicated. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna go to a party. You're you're your teenagers. You're gonna go to the party. You're probably gonna see alcohol. You're probably gonna see drugs. This is what you do. This is how it affects you. And they were they were very open and communicated. Mm -hmm. and raised a pretty well adjusted daughter. And That's I, good. I honestly like that approach. I feel like it gives them more of an openness to be their own person, but yeah. also they can be educated and And they can formed. choose, okay, I don't want that to happen to me, yeah, so Yeah, we'll exactly. Back, right? so and they can know the consequences if they do end up right. choosing to do, you know, right. those things. This is the law. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not treat but, you know. But, you know, as parents, though, it's, I'm sure it's hard because you think back on what you did on that age, and you're yeah. like, oh, I remember how I felt at that age. And, you know, obviously, I'm still young, so I don't know any of that, but. There's still, I mean, I am of drinking age. Do not worry. I'm not that young. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I'm not that young. <laughs> it's always to be assumed. I did have my daughters on here. I did. Yeah, right. I, 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 I don't know if you saw the episode, but I, I had cream sodas. Oh, yeah. Was, you were telling me about that's that. That's what's in the fridge. Uh -huh. that's, that's my alternative to, uh, I shouldn't be talking about this, but if someone doesn't want to drink, yeah. I can get my cream soda. They can still have a mug. Right. A mug, Feel a part of it. Right. I mean. Yeah. It looks like beer. But I definitely accepted a free beer and two. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. that's all I can pay on, right? Yeah. <laughs> until, we, until we get some sponsors. Mm -hmm. then I, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I was pouring them uh, in the cream soda and frosty mugs. And mm -hmm. they, I don't really drink pop hardly at all. So, oh, okay. So it was new to both of them. I was yeah. sliding over. And, and my oldest thought it was really a beer. She goes, 
I'm going to need this just to deal with her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That was hilarious. That's so so funny. Yeah, I don't actually feed my kids beer, but, yeah, I, but yeah, I think yeah. early introduction, and I've seen parents that, that actually allow their teenage or, you know, got kids in that kind of late teenage stage, they allow them to have a few drinks, and I mm -hmm. think that's okay. I think a yeah. parental introduction to that is mm -hmm. good. I, I feel in moderation. Yes. Because definitely some parents have gone way too far with it and like, mm. you know, the kids end up partying at their house, you know, which I understand, you know, you want parents. people, to, right, you want the kids to be in a safe environment and, you know, you can control it, make sure nobody, you know, drives drunk or whatever, have you not, but it's at the same getting time, back it's, to the days where there used to be cool parents that did that a long mm -hmm. time ago. And yeah. Uh, it kind of went away, but it seems like that's coming back. Which yeah, I mean, I, I there was some that I knew when I was in high school. I, say, I don't know how old, actually, I don't know how old you I'm are. I'm 23. Oh my I gosh. Just, yes, I'm okay. very young, yeah. <laughs> I think you did tell me that before, and uh -huh. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. But I, I think of you as older because you just have, are more mature. Mm -hmm. It's then, the trauma. Cheers <laughs> 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 to the trauma. <laughs> But I've found that my whole life, and you're, I think... You're definitely more mature than most, most people your age. Yes, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I do have two older sisters, and so I was always hanging out with them and their friends yeah. and stuff like that. I have older brother, so I was always thought I was older than I am, which yeah. doesn't help because I look older. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Well, and it's weird, too. It did in the beginning, but yeah. it hurts me now. Yeah, well, I always love that. I've always been told that I look older than my age, but lately I've been getting, oh, you seem like you're 20, 21. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, but on the flip side, I get people, oh, you're 25, 26. I'm like, no, I'm actually, you know, but, um, yeah, definitely the things that I went through, I had to grow up very quickly and, um, I did have a very good childhood up until a certain point. So I am very grateful for that. Um, but definitely the shit that I went through made me who I am today. And, you know, some people say they wish they could go back and change things, and I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Everything happens for a reason in my eyes, and I feel all, like, all of the shitty things that happen, it may be who I am today, and, you know, maybe I'm not the biggest fan of who I am today, that's okay, but it's part of me, and it's part of my experience, and I can learn from those horrible things to create a better version of myself, you know what I mean? I've got a couple questions for you, but first... First, a comment on what you said. Um, I hear people say it a lot. Not everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. I flip that around and say everything happens for, or everything, there's a reason everything happens. Mm -hmm. And well, that's the logical side of me coming out. Mm -hmm. And you, you touched on something that I, I grew up with. Uh, I, I learned growing up. I value all the experiences I had, good and bad. Mm -hmm. I, I try to learn from them and grow from them, mm -hmm. and then move on. And yeah. then spend no time, waste no anger on that. Right. Move on, grow no from grudges. It. But it also helps to make you who you are today. And it's like, I value who that is, because lately I've been getting good feedback from people. Like, people are saying good things about me. I'm like, oh, shit. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. It's good to hear, but it's like, it's been a long it's work in progress. It's taken a long time, yeah. It's taken a long time to get here. And mm -hmm. Went through some stages and divorce was not easy, but uh, I think managed it as well as anyone could ever manage a divorce. Mm -hmm. But there's some still some lingering effects from that. But I think since then I've, I've worked even harder on myself mm -hmm. to be just a, a good person, and that's I'm getting a lot of validation in my life. I love it. Mm -hmm. I kind of bit. I love yeah. it. It's like yeah. it's nice to hear people say great things about you. Oh yeah, and especially yeah. from people you never expect it from. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen in you, and like we've had, we've had some conversations, and I honestly thought you were older. And yeah. to me, that is a compliment. Oh yeah, I mean I that is a total compliment. compliment. Yeah. I know it's not like don't don't ever tell a woman she's older than she is. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like but, especially for someone who's younger though, right. like me, it really is a compliment because I do not want to be an immature twenty-three year old, you know. <laughs> but you know, though, your twenties, go be twenty something. You yeah. Know, go, go do that. That's yeah. what you're supposed to have sure. the fun, the most fun in your life. Go do that. Yeah. But I've and never I've really gotten along with people my age. I mean, yes mm -hmm. and no. But I, I would I, guess it's a maturity thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. I've yeah. just always gravitated more towards people who were older than me. You know. Yeah, two reasons, right? Your your experience and the fact that you had older siblings. Yeah. Like, I had older siblings too, so I, I was gravitated toward the people that were older than me. Yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. Same thing here, and I'm just kind of later stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I see before me someone who's very cool, very, very mature, and neuroscience kind of shows that men and women mellow at different ages, and 
we always heard that 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 saying that you know women women mature faster. Mm -hmm. And neuroscience kind of shows women actually start maturing to their full potential around thirty. Okay, interesting. And then that. men around mm -hmm. forty. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So, <laughs> Honestly, probably what you've seen at the bar and dealing with men of all ages and women yeah. of all ages, you could probably confirm a lot of that. Yes, most definitely. And that's observational science. Right? Yes, I've always been, my mom used to tell me, well, she still tells me to this day when I was a baby or, you know, even just a couple months old up to, you know, a year or two years. I would always, like, people would come up to me, hi, you're so cute, and I would just stare. I would just stare at them, <laughs> like, straight face, just stare. Then I would look around all the time, and I always just was a very big observer, and I still am to this day. Like I said, I like to go out to eat by myself and just take in my surroundings, and it's just very interesting to step back from your autopilot everyday routine and then, like, get away from the phone, you know, and then yes. to just observe humanity as a whole and how humans interact with one each other, with one another and, yeah. and just life itself. And it's just like, wow, like sometimes I forget the simplicity of life and how beautiful these small little things are and just watching people connect and interact with each other. I mean, it's, it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. You are wise beyond your years. So oh, for thanks. Sure. For yeah. Sure. I'm I definitely an old soul. Definitely I love an old that. soul. That's Thank awesome. you. Thank You're you. So cool. Thank, <laughs> you very, thank you very much for that. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, of course. You probably forgot them, but you said you had some questions. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you go from here to here to here. You forget. But that's that's what I like. That's a good conversation I like, and that's what I like when I go out to the pub. Mm -hmm. Good conversation. You just batter off each other. That doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't. Yeah. And, and what I've learned is some of that comes from. Some of that comes from an intellect mm -hmm. and, uh, and what people like. I'm not a surface value person. I don't yeah. like small talk. And I feel like, too, it depends on how open-minded they are. Very much so. Because if they're, I feel like people who are more closed off can't really get you into that. I'm going to bring something up. Oh, you're good. No. Um, they can't really get into that deep conversation, I feel, because... You know, if you were to start talking about something, they would immediately, oh, I don't agree with that, or I, yeah. I don't believe that, you know, or, oh, you're wrong. And it's like, no, I don't believe that, you know. This quote right here. So, the idea is it's a high-level thing, right? Yeah. And average minds discuss events, mm -hmm. which is, you know, that's okay, too. Yeah. Small people, dis or small minds discuss people. And that's so accurate. Right. So accurate. This is wisdom from 2,400 years ago. Oh, really? This is Socrates. Wow. So I've been a big fan of going, <laughs> going backwards, going backwards in time, and learning different uh, different mythologies and learning different philosophies. Now, okay. I've gotten, went from a lot full of that <laughs> mythologies to philosophies. Okay. The more of these I have, the worse my language will get. <laughs> <laughs> but um, learning about Greek. What the Greeks knew. I mean, earliest Western civilization. Yeah, yeah, Asians were much older civilizations, mm -hmm. for sure, and they had very similar philosophies. Mm -hmm. This kind of stuff. When you start listening about what they were reading, what they were saying, listening about what their their thoughts were on humanity, you start to realize all the crap we're going through right now is nothing new. Mm -hmm. Technology connects us, makes things happen faster, but none of it's new. Still the same shit. Right. So, connecting with people, for me, I, I see that that's a, you got to talk to about a hundred people before you find two or three that you can really talk to. Yeah. And observationally, that's about right too. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you're a very open-minded person, your energy can bring other open-minded people too, because I feel like when you're open-minded, you're more susceptible to pick up on energy, even if you're not even aware of it. I'm a big energy believer sure. too. And so I feel like that's why some people are drawn together and they click like that because their yeah. energy is just, you know, without even both of them realizing it, just kind of magnetize them together. And then next thing you know, you're having this three hour long conversation about this, this and that. Mm -hmm. And I do that quite often. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you're a very open-minded person, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and it's it's it, something you have to train yourself for. Yeah. You know, because you get locked in ideologies or raised in certain religions. That ego. And right, yeah, the ego. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> right. I work with engineers. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These guys, they're smart because they're mm -hmm. engineers. They know. Mm -hmm. Really. 
you're, you're very smart in what you know. Right. Outside of that, it doesn't quite apply sometimes. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. I've I've I brought up in the automotive world. I've known engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got engineers in my family, and then of course a lot of blue collar workers. So yeah. Very hard 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 workers, right? People mm -hmm. that believe on a. Uh, and we've had this discussion here before about people from Michigan just seem to have this blue collar hard working mentality. Mm -hmm. It's ingrained in us. It right? really is. Yeah. Especially also a very farm educated life, level, right? Or yeah. high education level, or engineers, and then PhD level engineers, and, and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. We got a lot of those around here too. Mm -hmm. I've worked with all of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I can I can match anyone at any level because of all the the all the different uh, things I, I've looked into and, and the self education. Your experiences too, I'm sure. Right, experience is part of that self education, right? Mm -hmm. I think experience is one of the better teachers than. Than the education system. Yeah. Our education system is is crumbling and failing us horribly. And horribly. Horribly. And if you look at it from a business aspect, what's the return? <coughs> the return on investment. Mm -hmm. You're paying more and more every year for an education. Just to, to get a job same. that's paying you less and less. Yeah. It's so we got this. Kind of thing. And one thing that's messed up about, not to cut you off, but sure. one thing that's messed up with the education system is that we're, we're taught to learn in a way where, okay, we're going to learn about this segment, and then you're going to take a test, and then we're going to completely just keep moving and keep trekking forward. Mm -hmm. So what I've found, not only just in myself, but also my peers and generations younger and older than me, is that we have learned to like just throw away that information that we learned because we passed that test, right? And we're going to keep trucking along and move on to the next thing and learn that and that. So there's times where like I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know how to do certain equations or I don't know how to yeah. do simple math because it was so, we need to hurry up and meet our quota so that we make sure that we can show, oh, we taught these students all of these subjects that we were supposed Learn to. Learn enough you know? to do enough to pass the test. And then, on. yep, exactly. Right. But then that can kind of hurt us in mm -hmm. the future because we're just taught that that's how we should learn and it's like it never gets soaked in I feel it just brushes the surface and then it gets wiped away by the new information that gets you know trickled in and mm -hmm. like when I try and help out my kids with their homework I'm like oh my god I don't know anything <laughs> I feel so uneducated and not only that we're getting fed false history too and that's a whole another story that's a whole other podcast segment yes. really could be we'll <laughs> yeah there'll be another time yeah, yeah I, I can agree as a as a an older parent of younger kids i'm educated a different generation mm -hmm. so there, there's parents that are much much younger than me with same age kids and they're educated in a different era than i was mm -hmm. when my kids bring me home i'm like what the hell is why this it's shit? so <laughs> different don't say that in front right of them. exactly like, this is not math and though. i mean even for me, I mean, I just graduated in 2017, and then so um, she's in fifth grade, and I look at some of the stuff she's doing, I'm like, I, I don't even know how to go about helping you. I don't even know how to solve it myself. So according to you, it's still changing that right It now. is, yeah. And um, also, they teach differently, too, on how to do different things. And so it's, it's hard. I couldn't even imagine being a parent trying to help your kids, but you don't even know. And that's... And I see it with the kid, with her mom. She comes to me for help because she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, I don't know either, you know. It looks you like your daughter's SOL. So well. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, and then well, that's what's hardest because, you know, they were raised in a different country, so. Oh, that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So they try it. Like, I, I am not Christian or of religion. I, I'm not exactly like a, an atheist or like or agnostic or whatever like i said i'm very open-minded spiritual i am a very spiritual yes i'm a very spiritual person so i don't ever you know shut anybody out for their beliefs i'm mm. not gonna you know say oh you're wrong you're a piece of shit unless you're trying to shove it down my throat then that's i don't agree with that you should that's never fair. you know everybody has their own opinions and beliefs mm. we should you know allow that with each other but yeah, I mean, she'll, so she goes to a Catholic school and she says, can you help her with, you know, some of this Christianity, Catholic, you know, religion, her, the, the, religion they live, have, they, yeah, their religion class, it's one of their subjects, and I'm like, yeah, I cannot help with that, I'm like, you're going to have to look that up because I don't know a damn thing about that at all. I got a lot of trouble with nuns in terms of, because I went to Catholic school. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Because I like the question sorry breaks. for you, yeah. I like the question and breaks. they don't like that. And what happens to your... Uh, we talked about this earlier. What happens to your dog when it dies? Mm -hmm. There's no soul in the dog. Oh, that's horrible. Cut me right now. Right? Okay. That's Stick it in my heart. That's kind of awful. Yeah, my dog just died. Aw, like, uh, really? did that so, really happen to you? Uh, that's so, so heartbreaking. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, it's like, wow. They're cold. These nuns are cold. Wait, to break you off, I um, broke the seal. I gotta go pee again. <laughs> well, we'll pause. Yes. Hi, break. What? Just getting ready for the pub. What do you web shave with? All right, we're gonna hammer on the uh, Catholic Church for a bit. <laughs> All right, let's hear the good old truth. I'm not shy. Of, I'm not shy of uh, religion, uh, politics. I'll stay away from. Yeah. But I'm not shy on religion, but yeah. Did you used to get the ruler? No, my older brothers did, so oh, I was right. aware of it. Yeah. Um, and that kind of time frame, it was in my oldest brother was only seven years older than me, so it was that kind of time frame that was waning very really quickly. Yeah. But yeah, the fear lucky. was still there. Oh, I'm sure. Right, so, <laughs> yeah, they've, they've said mean things like, yeah, you know, your dog's doesn't have a soul, you'll never see them again. Like, oh. That's terrifying. But, and I've had questions, it's like, religion class, okay, when are we going to learn about other religions? You're not. Why are we calling it religion class? Wow, that's so true, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to hear about Greeks. Yeah, you know, and Greeks. how, so, were, you, were you in Catholic school throughout all of your schooling, or? First six years of my life, first six grades. Okay. Um, so up until but, sixth grade. Yeah, then I got to seventh grade and I went to, we moved and went to Toledo Public Schools, which is a whoo, that was like mini Detroit. Oh, wow. And then, I, and then for one year. What an adjustment. One year I went back to a Toledo Catholic school, which was like, school spirit. Yeah, like, right. Uh, fuck this place. Right, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and, then, and then came back to Monroe and I said, get me into the public schools. And uh, Monroe actually had an awesome automotive program. Oh, okay. And awesome, they had uh, machining, welding and automotive and they had two year programs in each and okay. you can basically go through that and get a job right out of high school mm -hmm. and that's what I did until I decided to go back to college but so I, I did spend seven grades out of my school early life. academic life yeah. in Catholic schools and ugh, no thank you that, that was actually three different Catholic schools mm -hmm. but I will give my mom a ton of credit she went through divorce she kept three boys in private schools, the word tuition sounded like a dirty word. I'm <laughs> sure, like, so yeah. I'm tuition. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Don't speak of that. Oof. So, yeah. Ugh. But I try to keep, I, my daughters are in, in public schools. The idea was to try to get into an area, a decent school system. Mm -hmm. But again, it's like the politics that starts bleeding into the schools. I'm like, I'm watching them carefully. It's like, I'm going to try to have open dialogue with them anytime they have questions. So every day I'm trying to check in with them and yeah, find out what good. they did at school. It's like, yeah. fine, good day. I mean, yeah. they don't want to talk about it. But yeah. <laughs> that's typical kid shit, to be honest. It is typical kid <laughs> stuff. But, I, I, but anything that comes up, I want to be as open as possible. Mm -hmm. So you know how three-year-olds will ask me why, 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 why? And then they'll, they'll, they'll just hammer you until every, every little thing. Mm -hmm. I was impre I impressed myself. Yeah, my, my, I forget which daughter was doing this to me, too, but it was like, she was asking me, what's this made of? What's that made of? What's that made of? And I was, my engineering brain kicked in, and I kicked it all the way down to atoms, and the protons, and neutrons, and electrons. <laughs> it's like, one of those things made of? I'm like, all right, kid, you get the quantum physics. When you get to college, you can... Right, answer. we can figure that out. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. Most so people that aren't there time. yet. So right, just, right. Uh, so I felt pretty good that I was able not to blow them off. I didn't want to, like, just... Do that the dad thing was blown no off. don't worry about it but i yeah. but i was able to take him down to that level and mm -hmm. i felt pretty good about that yeah no that's good that's good i'm sure if they were around here they would they would have some sort of different say yeah <laughs> that's okay that's okay I, I i do my best and the, the 
best I do with my daughters, I think, is just when we sit down at the dinner table, we have a lot of laughter. Mm -hmm. and I think that's, that's the key. best part. It so. is key. It's, you know, um, it's so important, those moments, you know, looking back at my childhood with my dad, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't perfect. Nobody's perfect. But so many great fond memories of having fun with him. And, like, mm -hmm. just the little things really do mean so much, like, as a female have you know with a dad like that bond is just I was daddy's little girl and so you so know yeah and you know and just that unconditional love is so important and you know just that protection and yeah they got a good dad yeah, even if I even if I lose my temper with them mm -hmm. and I scold them and they're in their rooms or whatever I'll, I'll cool off I'll come back a little bit later Mm -hmm. Try to explain myself. It's mm -hmm. like, this is why I got upset. Mm -hmm. Do you understand this? Do you understand that? And yeah, this that's is what good. you did. And this is what I did. And yeah. So I'm sorry for getting losing my temper, but this is what I did. So, yeah. That's good. Nowhere near perfect. You know? mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I may, no I may present up. myself like I'm perfect yeah. in this podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, that's one thing that I really like remember with my dad passing was I was able to look at him as not a dad, but a human, and remember that there is no guidebook on adulting. I've heard that so much, but it never really hit me until... No, when the baby comes home with you, it's like, where's the owner's manual? Right, <laughs> right. I couldn't even imagine, really. They, they like, yeah, the hospital's like, all right, change the diaper, and you can give a bottle. You're good to go. Right, see that, and you're like, Ooh. what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So that's why all parents are like super protective of their first child. Yeah. And by the time they get used to the second child, they're like, eh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why me being the third, I'm like, woo! <laughs> yeah, doing my own thing. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. Well, all right. <laughs> we didn't really harass the Catholic Church too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's not, like I said, not a subject I, I, I want to stray away from. Mm. <clears throat> so far, Randy, you've been a great guest. Mm -hmm. And uh, we. Thank Definitely you. be honored to have you back sometime. Yeah. Um, I love and, questions. So I love questions. Just a kind of short, uh, short wrap up. Give us a little bit of time here. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we finalize it and wrap it up? Um, just we'll be, time kind, your be kind to your servers. Yes. <laughs> be kind yes. to your servers. Um, In the spirit of what we're doing, yes, be kind to your servers. Tip them well. Mm -hmm. And I might start finishing off every podcast with, yeah, tip your server as well. I think, it's a, I think it's a good way to finish off these podcasts. Right. I, I, I'm for that. I'm for that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you never know what someone's going through at, through their day or in their life or anything. And with so many people and their mental illnesses and so many suicides, I mean... It may not even be them, it might be the people in their lives yeah. with mental illnesses that they're dealing with. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it trickles so far along. It, it literally costs nothing to be nice. It literally costs nothing to give somebody totally a compliment agree. or anything. And, you know, I have lost, I lost three friends to suicide, and then I've known two other more. They weren't really friends, but I knew of them, you know, mm -hmm. that were to suicide. And four out of the five were men. And I think it's really important to realize that men's just mental health and their emotions just get kind of tucked away under the rug because sure. they're supposed to be these manly men. You're supposed and, to be tough. You know, you're supposed to be tough. Yeah, and you're supposed to be, you know, taking care of the house and doing this and being that. And it's like, yes, I understand each gender can have a role that they need to fulfill because, yes, men and women bring different things to the table. It's just you know, how it is. Yes. Yeah. And with that, you should be able to have a good partnership where you can both help each other out. It should be a 50-50 thing, right? And so... You are a wise man, you're here. <laughs> yes, yes. Awesome. Well, I mean, and that's why, um, for example, just when I worked Wednesday, I had this couple, and they were probably in their, you know, late 20s, early 30s, or something like that, and... Um, they went to go pay, and she's like, oh, no, I've got this time. And he's like, no, like, seriously, I've got it. And she's like, you have paid for so many of my meals. Like, don't worry about it. And I I was, and I, and I took her card, because usually I'm one to be like, no, like, you know, a girl deserves to have her meal paid, you know. But I'm all for, like, a 50-50 type thing. Like, hey, you got the last couple of meals. I'm going to get the next couple. You know what I mean? And, and so I looked at him, and I said, men deserve to be treated, too. They really do. And <laughs> they really do. And it's not like I'm trying to, like, 
the little women being taken care of and like yes women should be put on this amazing pedestal because women are no, yes, I, and they shouldn't be like worshipped because not all women are good. They're not deserving of it. Yes. If they are, definitely do so. Women but, are still human, you right. know, at the bottom point, you know, at the bottom line. But, you know, everyone deserves to be treated with kindness, whether you're a male or female or, it's the best you know, policy. whoever you are, you know, it's just, at the end of the day, we all have hearts, we all have brains, we all can't have the same organs, the same... You know, like we're all connected most, somehow. Most of the same organs, yes. Yeah, most, <laughs> most, yes. Internal organs. I'm not going to give them that one just Well, yet, yeah, but, I uh, guess some people lose kidneys or whatever. And then <laughs> even genitalia or whatever. But, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, we're all connected in some way or another. And it's just at the end of the night, and it just be kind to one another. You never I know can, what's going I can tie that now. statement with, um, and be kind to of one another, and you're right, it doesn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. um, that's beautiful, but one thing I learned through evolutionary science, and uh, everyone, especially people that are considering suicide, oh, this is a good moment, um, one thing I want to teach my daughters or anybody that's talking to me is, understand that through biology, we are all connected all the way back to the very beginning of life on this planet. Mm -hmm. there, we are part of an unbroken chain all the way back to the first life of this planet. Mm -hmm. We're all part of that. Yeah. You know, it's just understand that you're a survivor. You survived everything this planet has ever thrown at us. Right. And you you were you were here today because of that. And mm -hmm. Own that. And move right. on. I mean, carry it forward. And um, I think what happens too is we get so caught up in our thoughts and these delusions that our brain creates from this overthinking. That we forget that even the smallest people that we wouldn't even give a second thought to will remember us and think, hey, where did they go? You know what I mean? Like, like say somebody who comes to Johnny is not all the time, but once in a while and mm -hmm. always comes on a day that I work. You know, what if I ended up killing myself? They'll end up being, you know, where's Raina? What happened to her? Yeah. Or maybe the grocery store that you always go to and you always see an employee that sees yeah. you. You know, like just the smallest little things like you make an impact to so many people that you don't even realize. And it doesn't always have to be a huge impact. You know, it can be the smallest of things. Little things, exactly. Yeah, so it's just... Like I was saying about remembering people's names. Yeah. Little things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's just hard. And, um, you know... Or remembering what drink they make. Or, or they, they, what, what drink they, they like. Yeah, right? what they like. Yeah. <laughs> you almost started got, out with them. Yeah. <laughs> you got too excited to be witty. Yeah. <laughs> It does happen. That's why I write things down because mm -hmm. I do screw things up on <laughs> how the man. Yeah, I get that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, if you have any questions for me, I love questions. I, you know, anything that you want to know about me or anything, really. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I, I no, I, I just think you're you're an amazing person. I'm, I'm so glad to get to know you more today. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, you're, you're one of the people I, I've kind of known, but didn't know quite as well as yeah. the others. Yeah. But I knew there was something about you that was just that was cool, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad to have you here. Yeah, um, I appreciate you telling me about it. Yeah. I, I love like chatting. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is this is like I said, it's like every now and then you get those good conversations at the bar. Mm -hmm. It's like. And I it's want hard that to too more. because when you come in, sometimes I'm too busy, right, or right, like right. if it's at the end of the night, just like the other night, where I'm just like tired and I gotta close up and I'm ready to get the fuck out of there, you know. <laughs> I hope nothing gets. It's like yeah, you've, you've worked on it. You wanna go home? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. I'm not one of those guys concerned. I don't know why you're not talking to her. I know, man. Yeah. Dealt with those. <laughs> I'm sure. I've dealt with it all, really. I'm sure, and that's why I want to honor you guys today. Mm -hmm. it's, and you're the first, and hopefully the first of many. And mm -hmm. And that's one of the things we learned about this. Yeah, I know it does keep going away, <laughs> but um, I'll yeah, figure, I'll I figure mean, that out eventually. it's it's hard being a female server, that's for sure, especially yeah. at a bar, and yeah. you know you just kind of have to stick up for yourself and. And even in the nice place that we live in, there there's still fears like even afterwards. Like I, I've I've walked some of the ladies to the car. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I get it. I yeah. Mean, I get it, and that, you could be, be you could be nice to a customer mm -hmm. because you, you want to be nice. Yeah, you know? and they take it the complete wrong way. Right. Well, especially, if nice they, especially if they have a couple drinks in them. 
And it's usually, it yeah, it does happen. <laughs> but and yeah, guys, you, you should know. You know we should, should know better. You should learn to pick up on social cues, really. Like if a girl visibly seems uncomfortable or she's really not partaking in the conversation that much, that means you should probably back off a little bit, you know, and respect her boundaries. And yeah, yeah, I, I've dealt with some really gross guys and have had really gross things said to me. And it's like, dude, I'm just trying to do my job. I'm like, and then you get stuck with them until they leave. And it's like, just give me my money and leave. It's awkward. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then if you stand up for yourself, oh, I'm not interested or please stop talking like that. Okay, well, you get no tip then. And it's like, that's fucked up, you know? It's frustrating. <laughs> it's frustrating. But, like you said, Makes you want to be the big ogre bouncer. Right. <laughs> and then I was like, are you sure, buddy? <laughs> yeah, right. And, and it's hard because, you know, you can't yell at the customers. You have to be yeah. nice. And I do have to say, I did have a moment where I did yell at a customer. And um, I can't go into much detail about it because I'm technically not supposed to discuss it because some things have happened. Maybe I can discuss Just it a bit off camera. Keep it a little vague. But yeah, well, that too. But basically, somebody came and... He's notorious for not tipping well, and he always brings different women. Mm -hmm. And I knew that going into the, to taking care of him because the other server didn't want to. But there's a lot of things going on. My dad's one year was coming up. TMI, but I was on my period. Like, it was just, I, I was just at my breaking point. And it really was just, like, the one thing, like, he gave me money for his bill, and he said, keep the change. And the change was not even a 10% tip, and it was a high bill. It was almost $100. Like five dollars away from a hundred, yeah. So I just snapped and I just went off and like technically I should be fired because he ended up calling about it and it was just it was he just his ego was hurt and he wanted to show oh I have power I mean I can get you in trouble you know what I mean so saying he, saying he was gonna press charges and all these things I'm like. You will get laughed at if you're gonna call hey I want to press charges against the server yelled at me for not tipping her. Okay, well, maybe you shouldn't be a douchebag and you should have tipped her, you know what Empty I mean? Threats. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Right, boo fucking hell. Yeah. Well, I don't want to end on a bad note. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That just popped out. Uh, you, got, you got a little time left. Oh, process. We, we can, uh, uh, I'll, I'll use that as our hour glass, Yeah, so. right. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, let's try to get to a happier story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, for but sure. But once again, that's a, just another good reason, because understand your servers are not just dealing with you, they're dealing with assholes like that down the bar. Right, so, yeah. So take be care just, of them. Yeah, yeah, and just be, like, considerate. Like, if a server isn't coming to you for a while, she probably has five other tables that are, yeah, like, yeah. that are dragging, or, like, sometimes they get stuck, and I'm like, okay, like, I go, and they're like, oh. You know, like you said, there's those different hats, so, and that's what can be hard is when men start to make you uncomfortable, you still have to keep a hat on, and you still yeah. have to, you know, be professional, and, you know, you can't, Yeah. because if men treated me the, the way they treat me sometimes as a server, if they treat me like that outside of Johnny's, it would be a completely different situation, it would be handled completely different. It would probably be justified in just open hand slapping them, mm -hmm. just saying. Yeah. I mean, quite honestly. Yeah. I, I, it costs nothing to be kind. It really doesn't. It right? doesn't. So I, I don't understand that. And I've had that trouble too. So let me just switch to being a single guy and, and, and just showing a lot of respect for, for women. And it's like, I don't understand how some women are so guarded because I've always been respectful to women. Mm -hmm. But hearing these stories, how men, certain men treat women, Mm -hmm. I can understand why those guards are up. Oh, yeah. Because, damn it, there's asshole guys out yeah. there ruining it I for mean, the good guys, right? There's a video of, um, like, a professor at a college who, like, has a very huge class, over 100 easily, and um, a lot of them are women. And, you know, she said, if you or anybody that you know has been subjected to sexual assault or sexual harassment, stand up, and almost damn near every single person stand up, stood up. Mm -hmm. And then she said, okay, stay standing if they ever filed a police report about it or if they went to the police about it. And damn near almost everybody sat down. And it's just and it's just sad. I mean, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just become where these horrible things happen. You get raped or sexual assault or whatever, and you take it to the police, and it's just totally brushed off. And you feel, you know, I, I've been in that situation, actually, where I 
file the police report and nothing ever came of it and it was just very mm -hmm. like and I was young too I think I was 16 and it was actually one of my first serving jobs and it was the owner and he said some very not okay things to me and it was very traumatizing and um they didn't believe me at the restaurant. They just said it was a language barrier. I'm like, no, I heard very clearly what he was saying to me. You know, I'm not stupid. And language um, barrier, and that also gets back to what we were saying about communication and intent mm -hmm. and body language and mm -hmm. reading people, right? So right. if you're not you can say certain words, the English language kinda of sucks this way. Mm -hmm. You can say certain words and mean many different things yeah, about it. Very true. If you're in a situation, you're reading that person. Mm -hmm. You know what the fuck they're meaning. You're right. Especially if you know that person. Yeah. Right? If you don't know that person, there's some interpretation there, right? Yeah. And yeah, there's always a misinterpretation that can happen. Yeah. However, if it's someone you're working with, you probably know them very well. Yeah. And if they say something a certain way, and if mm -hmm. you took it the wrong way and, and, and told them about it, yeah. it, it didn't change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and even I'm, like backtracking to the energy, I'm very susceptible to energy. So like when that when that interaction happened, it was just like I could just feel like that nastiness, like that's mm -hmm. just that like uncomfortability and just the fear almost. Mm -hmm. I was so young, I didn't know. I literally didn't even like say anything to him. I was just so taken aback and like <clears throat> he kept going or whatever and then he ended up leaving and my the other server came out to me and she's like, what is wrong with you? And I just instantly broke into tears and it was, <laughs> you're okay. And um, yeah, so like it's, it's hard when you do try and open up and do something about it and you're just shot down and nothing happens for it because it's like okay then why did I even try why did I go through and dig up all of these emotions to try and get help just for it to get shut down like it's it's very hard as a woman mm -hmm. to try and you know get justice for yourself yeah so, yeah I like to get deep and heavy no. with things <laughs> you, know, you know what I, I have no problem going there mm -hmm. but I, I'm, I'm a pretty uh, I'm a pretty empathetic, empathetic person myself. yeah I, so I can I'm, tell you are I'm yeah. feeling it right but yeah and also, once again, my protective instincts kick in. Yeah. Any, any person that I'm good with, mm -hmm. if someone's treating them wrong, I stand up for them. Yeah. I play so, ice hockey, and okay. one of my rules in ice hockey has been I'm a defenseman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm protecting the goalie, I'm protecting my teams, I'm yeah. one of the bigger, stronger guys. I'm yeah. protecting my team. If somebody on the other team is. <laughs> is Fucking is, with your teammate? I'm the guy that goes in there. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I would say that's definitely why so many women are so guarded because it's so, it's sad, but it's so yeah. frequent that every woman that I know and have known in my life has had at least, at least one incident where it was rather sexual assault or sexual, you know, just like bad, like talking, like saying, you know, mm. sexual things that you don't want to hear or you don't, you know, want, you know what I mean? And and rape and all of those things and it's 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 very upsetting it's very hard so it's it's as a woman I know why other women are so guarded because more enough times we find the bad guys other than the good guys and that can also stem from how you were raised and how you know your own father was you tend to be more attracted to the same character tra traits as what your father had Mm -hmm. So, and that's the same with men, yeah. too. They you kind of marry one of your parents. Is yes, you yes. A lot of times men kind of go for traits of women that their mother has. Right. So, it's, I don't know, maybe it's just a psychological thing. I don't know. Maybe how it's, you're raised. You know or, you're nervous, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so. So, yeah, you're kind of, kind of getting into almost like the, the, the dating aspect again. And um, my, one of the things, like, one of the questions I had is like, well, how do we get the good guys in and the bad guys out? Mm -hmm. Right. How do, what? What filters can we, we give women to to help understand that? Mm -hmm. One thing I've been kind of kind of looking into quite a bit is uh, the whole topic of what, what's referred to these days as toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of don't like it. I don't like that term. Okay. I don't think masculinity itself is toxic. Because mm -hmm. if you're a true masculine man... man you're not going to be toxic. You're not toxic. You're, no. You protect those in your care yeah and you own that you, mm -hmm. you protect them you protect your woman you protect everyone around you mm -hmm. when you're toxic a toxic man one of people who define someone as a toxic man is someone who's they're looking at basically the asshole bully type right mm -hmm. 
these are the guys that come in, they come into the bar or whatever, and they're pushing other guys around, or they're talking cocky down, they're cocky, they're talking yeah. down on other people, they're trying to make themselves look big. Yeah. That is actually a very immature attitude. Yeah. And that's actually what I refer to as an, an adult age adolescent. Yeah. You're old enough to be an adult, but your mentality is an adolescent. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we've rooted out some of these processes that men would, men would take those kind of boy men and mm -hmm. put them in their place. Yeah. But we don't allow that anymore. Mm -hmm. Think about like um, like deer. Like um, big deer, older deer got the bigger antlers, the yeah. big strong one, right? Yeah. Little buck comes up, he's he's in rut, he's kicking around like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna kick some ass. Right. Well, gonna big deer comes face. in there and says, you know what? You're going down. You're right, right. And get away from my woman. Right, exactly. <laughs> so exactly. and I, sometimes I feel like that. I'm like some some I've seen it, I've seen it at the bar. I've seen it where um, some young kid, he was he was drunk, and I'm sitting at the corner bar, and I'm not showing any fear or any emotion. This guy, he's trying to talk tough and big, big man. And eventually, sir, he was pissing off the bartender, and I'm not gonna say who the bartender was, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> he started talking to me, and I'm just sitting, I'm sitting, I'm not standing up or anything. Yeah. He's, he's got chairs pushed away. He's standing up, and he's running his mouth, and he eventually starts talking to me, and he shakes my hand, I grab his fucking hand, <laughs> and I squeeze it hard, and he's like, oh, oh. <laughs> and, you're talking to a real man, and now. all of a sudden, yeah. he kind of stopped, and he stopped for a moment, and he started backing down a little bit, and it's kind of like, this guy in his early right. 20s, yeah. and he was a young buck in rut, right, yeah. he's got the little, the little horns coming out, and he's, he's kicking around and acting tough, and I'm not showing any fear, Yeah. but eventually, he kind of, he started getting kind of out of line, and then, um, uh, first, it was a manager at the time. She kind of walked him out because mm -hmm. he, he did some things that, that shouldn't have done. Yeah. And she kind of walked him out very tactfully. But I'm standing there. I'm, I, I'm kind of sitting there at this spot I'm always sitting at. Mm -hmm. And I watched. I looked. And like I looked behind me. There's a couple of the staffs like hanging behind my shoulder. Yeah. Like watching him. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, okay. You're the cool. protective one. I so I that. felt really good about that. But, yeah. No, you were but definitely. But the fact that that guy. Was he was running his mouth like he owned the place? Yeah. I'm like, Dude, I'm a regular here. Yeah. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. But for sure. But yeah, I think there needs to be a mechanism that that's it's gone. It used to be in place. Uh, you look back through history, and tribes had this where they would take the, these adolescents and they would take them out, mm -hmm. and they would take them away from the tribe and they would right. go through some sort of trial and they would come back a man. Yeah. But it was stuff that men did to them, whether they they made them hunt or or some sort of rite of passage. Right, or something. We don't have that mechanism anymore. Yeah. And we end up with these guys who are with these attitudes like teenagers. Yeah. And they all into their thirties, right? And then they're they're sitting at home, they're playing video games. They're yeah. in their mom's basement. They're not, yeah, they're not they're going not out impressive. and becoming a man, right? Yeah. They're not going out and becoming that provider and protector that men Learning need those, to be. Yeah, those key things. So yeah. it's on us as the older generation to try and guide them. And right. Some sort of thing. Yeah, if they let you. Right. Some are too ego stricken. So our, our mutual friend Johnny Patton, who's part of this podcast, he's mm -hmm. he's a guy I was talking to at the bar one time. Just mm -hmm. we just started talking about we were actually talking about Norse mythology. Mm -hmm. And I was educating him on what I knew. Yeah. He's like I've been studying this for years. Yeah. And then he just kind of got to know me and. and one of the big compliments I got was from him, and he was kind of like, kind of like a father figure. Aww, I'm like, that's oh, so it's like, I'm not that old. Yeah, right. Come on now. Right, come on. <laughs> but I'll accept Big Brother. Right, <laughs> exactly. There you go. Uh, real quick, I gotta go pee again. Sure. Sorry. All right. <laughs> real quick, and then we'll wrap it. Our next pub wisdom, Mike and I discuss Jesus versus Santa Claus. Your thoughts, Mike? Some of this stuff that, that men need to be men, and, mm -hmm. 
and there's a difference, and there's nothing toxic about it if you're truly a man. Yeah. Um, but, but women, I think, see, I'm going to go back to what women gravitate towards, and um, these, these asshole guys, or they're like a bully mentality, it's adolescent, like someone who's, who's beating their chest, and mm -hmm. I think women tend to recognize that as some sort of alpha male type, mm -hmm. and I think they kind of gravitate toward that. Yeah, I could see that. And then, then they start to find out this person's really immature, mm -hmm. they, don't really don't, they really don't have the values that I thought they did, mm -hmm. and then... They kind of, yeah, and then they kind of label it as a toxic yeah. yeah, I can see where you're so, coming from. So I think that's where it comes from, and mm -hmm. that's kind of my observation in life, and where, where I think women see that, but women want a strong man, right? I mean, kind of want a man that's big kind and of big together and, Yeah, big and strong, and can take care of you. And kind of shit together is more yeah, important too, right? big time. But big I think they, that's, the, that's the lesson they learn after. Right. Well, I think one of the big things too with women is that I've noticed with a lot, it's not all, but a lot of women think that they can fix or change mm -hmm. men or help them. And I think what happens a lot of times is we become in love with who we see that they can become, with their mm -hmm. potential. The idea. And yeah, and it's like we want to help them become that. But it's really what I've actually personally have been trying to learn myself is that with love, you should love some that person for who they are in that moment. Mm -hmm. You should not love somebody just because you see who they could be. Because at the end of the day, they could be that, yes, but they might not want to become that. They might want to become, you know, a different version of themselves that mm -hmm. in their eyes is a better version of them. Whereas for you, you want them to be a, that different, better version in your eyes. You know what I mean? Right. So um, I've noticed that a lot, a lot of my girls that I know are like, oh, but you know, I can help him, or he's, he has such great potential, and it's like, I can see that, yes, maybe you can help each other grow, but you shouldn't want to change somebody that you're in love with. You should want to help them grow, yes, but you don't want them to, you shouldn't change someone to become into who you want them to be. It's not, mm -hmm. you don't have the right to dictate who a person should be just so that right. you can love them, you know what I mean? And that's where things can get a little, um, a little messed up. In yeah. That's where... Um, yeah, the, uh, it's, I'm trying to change that so it stays up. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't want to, I think my advice for, for women would be, don't, don't love him for the idea you think he's going to be. Mm -hmm. Take notice, take very good notice of what are his goals? Mm -hmm. What is he doing to try to achieve those goals? Do you want to help him get to those goals? Mm -hmm. Those are the things you need to learn. Right. If, if you, you want to help them, help them with that. Yeah. Don't don't try to create fabricate this this idea of what you think he could be, because mm -hmm. yeah. he's not going to want to do that. And I mean, it could be vice versa too. You know. Right. With men and women. Absolutely. And wanting to have them be in a certain role or a certain mm -hmm. way. And I would just... totally support a woman's goals, right? If mm -hmm. she wants to do something, if she's got, if, if it's good and valid and I can see I can help, mm -hmm. totally support and help that. Right. right. And that is what I refer to as the yin and yang of, of yes. men and women. It's like yes. equals but opposites. And mm -hmm. help each other where you're, um, help, help your partner where they're weak and mm -hmm. where you're strong and then hopefully they'll help you when right. you know, where you you're weak and strong. You should help each other grow. Right. You know, not hold each other back. And Absolutely. That's a really big thing. There should never be a competition either. No. Yeah. And that's a big thing with my generation, I think. And I've been a victim of it too, where you get in a relationship and you just isolate and you only hang out with each other and you're with each mm -hmm. other 24-7 and doing everything together. And it's like, yes, it's important, obviously, to share quality time with each other when you're in a relationship. But at the end of the day, you're separate humans. You should have separate lives and separate... Of course, you can share goals and interests and all those things, but you should want to grow as a person and you should grow together in a way. Like, you should support each other's growth and not inhibit it, if you know what I mean. I've got a funny feeling if I'm recording or not. Do you see your red dot? Yeah, that was great. I'm happy you asked me to come. Yeah, no problem. So.